All right, let's talk about the vasculature of the lower limb. So we'll begin with the proximal lower limb, the thigh region, which is supplied by two arteries, one of which you can see here. So as the external iliac crosses under the inguinal ligament, um, it becomes the femoral artery. That femoral artery is going to descend down the anterior thigh, and it's actually going to make its way to the, the posterior aspect of the thigh through a discontinuity of adductor magnus called the adductor hiatus, which leads into the popliteal fossa. That, uh, that femoral artery also branches off adjacent to the femoral triangle into the deep femoral artery. That deep femoral artery is going to service the posterior compartment of the thigh. Before we uh, continue, it's worth note noting also that that uh, deep femoral artery is going to help supply the muscles of the medial thigh or that adductor compartment with blood and the obturator artery uh, is also going to supply those muscles with blood. Now as we continue inferiorly here down the thigh we can see coming out of that adductor hiatus is going to be the popliteal artery uh, which is there. As we make our way into the, the popliteal fossa the, the structure, which is most superficial here, is going to be the popliteal nerve, and then the popliteal vein, which is an accompanying vein, to the popliteal artery, and then the popliteal artery. Uh, the depth of the pop popliteal artery, uh, as well as it being obscured by other structures, is why um, getting a, a strong popliteal pulse is sometimes uh, difficult. Um, so it's a, a difficult pulse point to uh, to palpate. Now that popliteal artery is going to split into an anterior and a posterior tibial artery. The posterior tibial artery is going to continue inferiorly down the leg. Um, it gives off a fibular artery. That fibular artery is going to join the anterior tibial artery and supplying the lateral compartment of the leg with blood. Where the uh, posterior tibial artery uh, ends is a bifurcation at the, uh, at the calcaneus where the posterior tibial becomes both the medial and the lateral plantar arteries. And it's that lateral plantar artery which is going to feed it directly into the plantar arterial arch. So that's going to be the contribution to the plantar arterial arch from the posterior tibial artery. Looking at the anterior leg here, um, coming down is the anterior tibial artery, which is the dominant blood supply to both the anterior and lateral compartments of the leg although the lateral compartment uh, has some blood supply from that fibular artery. Um, as we move into the uh, foot, the anterior tibial artery becomes the dorsalis pedis artery, and that is the pulse point for the foot. Uh, dorsalis pedis artery is going to dive down deep into and through the, uh, the surface of the foot to become the deep plantar artery. The deep plantar artery feeds into the plantar arterial arch. So that plantar arterial arch is an anastomosis between deep plantar from the anterior tibial and lateral plantar from the posterior tibial. Now all of these arteries that, uh, that I've discussed so far uh, have accompanying veins. More often than not, uh, there are two per artery. So uh, vena comitantes, uh, if just one, it's a vena comitans. Um, and it's these deep 
veins, which are the major veins of the lower limb. So these uh, veins are greatly aided by both the fascia lata and the crural fascia, such that uh, we have compartments that as muscles uh, contract, uh, added pressure is added, and this added pressure helps to move blood through uh, and return it back uh, toward the heart. Uh, these veins are also valvular to prevent uh, the retrograde flow of blood. But there are also two uh, superficial veins. Uh, they're minor veins of the lower limb. So these aren't where uh, uh, deep vein thromboses typically originate from, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they can be uh, clinically useful in some cases. Uh, these include the, uh, the great saphenous vein. The, the great saphenous vein originates um, in the dorsal venous arch, and it's an important vein because while veins are rather inconstant, it has a, a fairly close classic anatomical relationship with the medial malleolus, so that, uh, that ankle bump from the tibia, and that's that the great saphenous vein uh, is typically found just anterior to the medial malleolus, and it's going to ascend the medial surface of the leg and then the thigh before finally diving deep into the femoral triangle to join the femoral vein in the, the femoral triangle. And the other is the small saphenous vein, sometimes referred to as either the lesser or the short saphenous vein. This vein also arises uh, from the, uh, the, the dorsal venous arch and it ascends the posterior aspect of the leg before diving deeply into the popliteal fossa to join the popliteal vein. So this concludes our discussion of the vasculature of the lower limb. I thank you for your time.